Hello everyone and welcome to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Jesus is coming. Every day we're looking at some of the great signs that are happening around us and in this episode we're going to look at some of the technological advancements in these last days. Elon Musk, a celebrity entrepreneur behind Tesla and SpaceX, finally unveiled what his company Neuralink has been up to for the past two years. Neuralink is developing a brain machine interface or BMI with the goal of one day helping the paralyzed use robotic limbs or other devices. Musk even envisions a future where able-bodied people also have BMIs that will let them communicate with artificial intelligence more efficiently. But BMIs have been around for over a decade, so what makes Neuralink's device newsworthy? Elon Musk has a habit of making bold predictions and goals for the future, like his claim that putting a human on Mars in the next four years sounds doable. For perspective, NASA's crewed missions to Mars won't happen until the 2030s. So of course, when Musk announces a company that's created thin threads to be implanted in human brains, it's going to make headlines. That is one of the more exciting aspects of Neuralink's coming out party, the thin cellophane-like filaments containing electrodes that will be inserted into the brain. BMIs that have come before use an array of stiff needles with electrodes to detect neural activity. As you might imagine, squishing a microscopic pincushion into your brain causes some damage and the recovery process can lead to some points of contact being lost over time. The brain also shifts inside the skull and when that happens, the needles can cause further damage. Flexible threads of electrodes, just 4 to 6 micrometers wide, could be less invasive and damaging. Neuralink also claims they would allow for a higher volume of data since they could use over 3000 electrodes, while some current BMIs have up to about 100. But their flexibility also makes them harder to insert, like pushing on a rope. To go along with their threaded electrode development, Neuralink also announced a remotely operated neurosurgical robot capable of inserting 6 threads a minute. Imagine a microscope and a sewing machine had a baby and you get the gist of it. But Musk's company still has bigger goals in mind. They are also hoping to do away with the mechanical drilling necessary to pierce the skull and get to those delicious brain meats. A physical drill sends vibrations through the skull. Instead, Neuralink would like to crack your bone bucket with lasers. And once they are done, lasering holes in your skull and using robo sewer to run you full of electrodes, they would like to seal your skull up again completely. Right now, BMIs rely on some sort of port sticking out of the skin. Neuralink's prototype has a USB-C plug to connect it to hardware outside. A wireless connection would probably mean less data could be sent back and forth, but it would eliminate the open hole in the skull a prime site for dangerous infections. Neuralink envisions a sleek battery-powered computer sitting behind the ear that will communicate with implanted chips connected to four different areas of the brain. It might even be controlled by an app. Some of the uses of BMIs are obvious. People in wheelchairs could control it with their minds instead of a joystick. Those who have lost limbs could have a connection to a robotic arm they can manipulate. And Musk envisions his threads of electrodes, not only being used to detect brain signals, but giving feedback as well. Controlling an arm that doesn't tell you where it is, it's like moving a limb that's fallen asleep. Some sort of sensory feedback would go a long way to making the technology more practical. But Musk also sees uses for his technology that are not as readily apparent. Right now, the way your brain communicates with the outside world is pretty limited. If you want to talk to a computer, you've got your mouth for speaking and your fingers for typing and that's about it. Musk envisions high bandwidth communication directly from your brain to missions and vice versa. He hopes to make the human relationship with AI a symbiotic one instead of his famously pessimistic outlook on the future of artificial intelligence. Before any of this can happen, Neuralink needs to get approval from the FDA 
to begin testing their technology in humans. The threads need to be proven to survive the highly corrosive salty solution inside the brain. And there's a host of ethical, security and privacy issues that need to be worked out as well. Right now, Neuralink technology has only been tested in rats and the grander ideas they have proposed were in a white paper that has yet to be peer reviewed by other academics. Musk hopes to have human trials beginning by the end of 2020. Back in 2015, Professor Pedram Moseni and Rudolf J. Nudo created a startup called Neuralink. These pair of neurotech researchers had developed a device that could potentially help people suffering from brain injuries. Investors didn't show a great deal of interest, but in 2016, a mysterious unknown investor came along with an offer to purchase the rights to the name Neuralink for tens of thousands of dollars. They sold, and that investor later turned out to be the multi-billionaire Elon Musk. Fast forward to the 27th of March 2017, and Musk announces that he will be backing a new brain computer interface venture, Neuralink. The ultimate goal of this new company is to merge man with mission, fusing human intelligence with artificial intelligence to bring humanity up to a higher level of cognitive reasoning. Without this technology, Musk argues that humans will be unable to keep pace with advances in artificial intelligence and that humans will become the intellectual equivalent of the house cats. So far, Musk has been calling this brain-computer interface technology Neural Lace. In essence, Neural Lace is an ultra-thin mesh that is implanted in the skull and forms a body of electrodes which are able to monitor brain function. It's not entirely clear at this time how far along the technology is in its development phase. But eventually, Neural Lace should enable humans to upload or download information directly from a computer. In order to insert neural lace, a tiny needle which contains the rolled up mesh is placed inside the skull whereby the mesh is then injected. The mesh unravels upon injection, encompassing the brain. Gradually, the neural lace will integrate itself with the human brain, creating a perfect symbiosis between man and mission. So far, neural lace has been tested on live mice. Upon autopsy, Researchers found little negative consequences associated with the insertion of this mesh-like structure. This technology sounds amazing. The ability to hook up our brains with missions and thereby enhance human intelligence could open up whole new worlds of possibilities for our species. It could even be the catalyst for almost mythical technological singularity. However, some critics are raising concerns about the ethical and real-world implications and consequences of this technology. For example, in a world where everyone's thoughts are connected to the internet, how would this affect our personal privacy? Would authoritarian governments seize upon the opportunity to spy on us or even take control of our minds? And what about computer hackers? Would they be able to exploit vulnerabilities in the software of our minds or inject viruses directly into our consciousness? All of this remains to be seen. And now it's time for the Chivo question of the day. What does SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, The Boring Company and OpenAI have in common? And the options are option A, they are co-founded by Elon Musk, option B, they are owned by Elon Musk relatives and option C, companies Elon Musk worked. We'll find out the answer after a short break. <laughs> Welcome back to Science Lab. The signs are happening because Jesus is coming. Before the break, I asked you the trivial question of the day, and the question was, what does SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, 
The Boring Company and OpenAI have in common. And the options are option A, they are co-founded by Elon Musk, option B, they are owned by Elon Musk relatives, and option C, companies Elon Musk works. The correct answer is option A, they are co-founded by Elon Musk. Elon Musk states that human cognition has two major systems, the limbic system where our emotions, needs and wants are processed and then the cortex which involves thinking and planning. The neural link in its final form is to be a third layer on top of this, a digital super intelligence layer augmenting ourselves with computers and eventually artificial intelligence. Depending on how you look at it, we already have this layer in the form of our phones and laptops. You have all heard the saying that we have all of the world's information at our fingertips. The bottleneck and all of this is how we interface with that information. Fingers and speech are too slow and a very low bandwidth form of communication between us and our devices. A much faster way to get to this information would be directly. This is called the Brain Machine Interface, BMI, and the Neuralink is an effort to solve this problem. It's already been a massive, multidisciplinary effort. It includes scientists, doctors, electrical engineers, surgeons, and more. So how does it work? Our brain consists of neurons firing all the time in response to electrical signals sent when we see, hear, move, talk or think. Whenever a neuron fires from these electrical signals, a tiny electromagnetic field is present. Basically, Neuralink is going to tap into these tiny electric fields generated as sinus junctions in the brain. It's going to interpret this analog data as ones and zeros to be used in the digital world. The neuron pulses will be detected using tiny threads about one-tenth the cross-section of a human hair or about the size of a neuron. Each thread is to be installed with a robot so it's not going to burst blood vessels or cause trauma. The needle for insertion is 24 microns in diameter, much smaller than the state of the art in deep brain stimulation. Such surgeries have been done before for deep brain stimulation for Parkinson's sufferers. Though these traditional methods have a 1 in 100 chance of causing a severe brain hemorrhage, a smaller footprint should make things much safer. The state of the art for Parkinson's deep brain stimulation has around 10 electrodes. The neural link contains thousands of electrodes. These electrodes need to be less than 60 microns away to detect a fire in neuron and serve as the interface that reads data from the brain and sends data to the brain. The processor for making all of this work is something called the N1 chip. The N1 chip reads analog brain signals, amplifies them, digitizes them, processes them and then sends it out to a pod device behind the ear. The pod device is the only thing that's going to be upgraded and the implants stay as they are. Remove the pod and everything shuts off. The N1 chip is 4 by 5 mm, low power and has built-in hardware for processing brain signals. It can read 20,000 brain samples per second. So these are real raw signals coming from the neural link hooked up to a brain. What the scientists are looking for are spikes and voltage when a neuron fires. This is the fundamental element of communication within the brain. An algorithm can detect these spikes in real time, decode them and make sense of the vast amounts of data coming in. This system can not only read data from the brain but also write data. To do this, a signal is run through an electrode near a neuron causing that neuron to fire. This kind of thing again isn't new and has been done since the late 1950s. It's actually the basic technologies behind the cochlear implant, the one that helps restore hearing. The information inputted into the brain doesn't have to be perfect because of neuroplasticity. This means the brain learns how to use the new information, reading data from the brain and inputting data into the brain can be and already kind of has been used to treat things like Parkinson's and epilepsy. But future applications can include things as far as depression and chronic pain. Further applications couldn't create a function in memory.
The original plan for the neural link is to connect four N1 chips with thousands of electrodes and coming from each chip. Signals will be sent via Bluetooth to the pod device behind the ear and it will be controlled by a phone. The first goal is to get patients to be able to control a mobile device, a phone, a mouse or a computer keyboard. The neural link will show up as a regular Bluetooth keyboard or mouse and they want to make people fully independent of their caretakers. This sounds lofty but has already been done before with a technology called the Utah Array. With only just a hundred electrodes, patients are able to text other people and control tablets with their minds. Remember, the Neuralink has thousands of electrodes resulting in a cleaner, more reliable signal for more complex applications. The first application for the neural link is to tap into the primary motor cortex, the part of the brain that sends signals down to the spinal cord and onto the muscles to drive the movement. It will start with simple things like a mouse and keyboard, but could also be used to read signals from all movement, even speech. And finally, it could be used to restore movement of someone's own body. The material science team wants to use materials or properties that would make the brain not only accept the neural link, but think that it's part of itself. The team has already released a paper of reading, recording and studying data from brains using their N1 chip. It's fairly controversial, but early tests on monkeys have been successful. Human patient trials are set to start by the end of 2020. The target patient will be a quadriplegic due to a spinal cord injury. The main hurdle so far has been FDA approval for implantable devices. So the future of neural link will be in three stages. Stage one is to understand and treat brain disorders, starting with people with serious medical needs. Stage two, preserve and enhance one's own brain. Stage three, full brain mission interfaces. In the future, that could even be a kind of app store for programs that you can download and control with your brain. Other possibilities from the presentation include a new kind of communication, kind of like telepathy or downloading the memories of someone who is familiar with the city so that when you go to that city, you feel familiar with it too. The possibility is a kind of endless. But of course, these are the very early days and we hardly understand anything about the brain right now. Although what the neural link is basing itself off has already been done in the medical field for decades. What they are proposing is a giant leap above all of that and it's going to be a long road to get there. Never before in the history of the humankind has the technology improved in this manner. Life has transformed into more than living. We are about to become one with technology. The Neuralink is just a helping tool in this technology in doing so. In the last days, Antichrist will come to this world and introduce a universal mark of the beast. It says in Revelation 13, 16 to 18. It causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is triple six. What is foretold in the Bible is happening again in our lifetime. These technological advancements show that we're living in the last days and the Lord Jesus Christ is coming again very soon. Thank you for joining us in this episode and don't forget to tune in to the Science Lab next time. Send us photos, videos, news and YouTube links which are worth sharing and also send us your feedbacks to our email address sciencelab at angeltv.org. Suppose if you have missed any of the episodes, don't worry, you can watch it again and again in our Science Lab YouTube page. But don't forget to like, share and comment on the video. Ask your friends or relatives to watch the Science Lab so that they will know they were living in the last days. Remember, the signs are happening because Jesus is coming. Maranatha.